Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Now, okay. Good morning. Is this better? Oh, oh yes. Oh, good this morning. Good. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Listen, I just heard you speak about um, Kendall Henry. Uh-huh. I understand he's a local fellow. Mm-hmm. I understand he's local. He's from St. Croix, and he's an artist in residence. Yes. So that that's a plus there. And the walking tour is going to be on Free Gut in Frederickstead, which is another thing that probably some people don't know exists. You know, we have one in Christianstead. There's also one in Frederickstead. And uh, so I'm like, Talking a war here because we're going to be the library at Wim is going to have a you know a little mini thing at the, at the ag fair, and so I'm going to have to escape. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the cleaning <laughs> service shut down. Listen, if anybody <laughs> tell me that there's nothing happening in St. Croix, I'm going to tell them. Let me assist you from <laughs> under that rock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> but I just wanted to bring that to people's attention, you know, and take the walking tour. Do, do, do as much as you can, but that walking tour is, you know, it's, it's a very interesting thing, and George Tyson always highlights the people who live in the area, like what he does with, um, you know, with his presentations. It's not just about, you know, the place. He also speaks about the people. So uh-huh. I'm looking forward to that, too. So I'll be running away from from my duties, <laughs> but it's all good. Well, the word is out now. The police might be there to block you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll beg forgiveness. <laughs> okay, all right. But, you know, it's, it's, it's so wonderful to have so many choices of things to do, so regular. It is. Okay. It is. And, and when I sent out that information and you know, when I shared it, the event with some of my friends, one of them uh, sent me a text and told me that, this uh, the artist in residence was her student. I think she said in fourth grade. All you right. Know? So, All right. Small <laughs> you know, It's nice to see when your students come back and they're doing well because he's not uh, living here. He's doing really good things. I understand abroad. So hopefully, we learn more about what he's doing and be an inspiration to others who are aspiring to get to you know that point right and and that's why i was bigging up the the caribbean museum center for the arts because Mm -hmm. they literally they literally have the the facilities there that they have artists from the Virgin Islands or otherwise, but from uh-huh. the Virgin Islands in particular that uh-huh. come back and they, they don't have to worry about a place to stay. Mm-hmm. They are the artists in residence and they work, they produce their art and do other stuff there. Um, it's fantastic that we have a facility like this available. It is. Okay? It and is. so I just want people to, to know, it's not just a building you walk in there and look at art I walk, but mm-hmm. there's new things going on mm-hmm. in there from other medium of... Um, of, of art as well as the artists in residence program they also work very well with clean sweep frederickstead when they were working yeah. on the barrels and yeah. stuff and the painting and everything mm-hmm. and of course we got bully peterson gonna be making people <laughs> frightened at the gym and <laughs> laughing till their belly hot among well, the folks I, i'm gonna show up there i remember <laughs> Bully making me laugh till I cry. My belly was really hurting me one time. <laughs> doing, he was doing an interpretation. Well, they were doing this poem from um, the I Puerto Rico Friendship Week weekend, and it was the English translation of "Y tu abuela dónde está." Mm. You know, your grandmother, where is she? Where is she? And so they had the little reenactment going on while the lady was saying it in Spanish, and Bully and his raw. Raw Crucian was translating it, and it was so hilarious. I wish it was recorded because you wouldn't hear that same way again, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, man, it's, it's going to be nice. This is going to be really a nice weekend, and I hope everybody's safe and enjoy it to the max. Well, we plan to document Bully this time around. So, <laughs> Bully, Bully going to be a star. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. I really appreciate you calling and, and sharing in terms of what's going on in the community. Yeah, and what the, the museum and other places are doing. And I just say, you know, enjoy the fair. 
be safe with all these people on the road. That's right. You know, uh -huh. and, and, and you know, we gotta watch out because all these centomians who come in over here that are driving <laughs> the right, you gotta make sure. <laughs> Give them some good crucial hey, food, man. They'll I, be good. I ain't beating up. I say I got I got plenty of family in St. Thomas, folks. This is Me just too. good nature. My humor grandchildren here. too. My grandchildren were born there. Right, 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 right. Yeah, no. So it's, okay. it's all good. It's all good. Okay, Doug. You take care. Okay. Have okay. A great give day. my little cousins, both of them, a big hug up for me. Okay. Will do. Okay. Bye okay, bye. Then. Take care. All right. Good. Good. All right. Yeah, man. I love being conflicted with so much to do and so little of me to go around, okay? But that's the nature, nature of what's going on in, in our community. Um, Good day, caller. You're on the air, WSTX. Dougie. Yes, sir. The lady that just called, she thought I learned something. I didn't know we had two free guts. I only know about one in Christian said Now we have one in Frederick said Miss son. And to see how joyful she was. You know, it's nice. It livens people up when you see people lively like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, that's, that's, that's my cousin Mary Roebuck. I'm going I to let oh. her let everybody know. We, but uh, she always have that glow on her face. If you ever see a frown on her face, you know it had to be serious. <laughs> this fellow, um, Youngblood, he's from Frederickstead. He's from here too, right? Paul. Paul Youngblood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He he he's from here, he's zooping, zooming in and out these days, but that that's part of our crucial heritage day. Man, you see where well, we we have to be thankful and be glad with what we produce. Yeah man. We've got talent here. All we gotta do is give our young people the resources and they will perform. Okay? Yes, they okay. will perform. We got to work on the young ones, my son. Yeah, yeah. You know, those those kids that I, I show you the video at the band performing? Yeah. This past Saturday, they had a car wash, okay? And them children, them children walk the tail part off, okay? Them <laughs> car were coming in and coming in, and they were there, like, they, you know, I got a song, at the car wash. <laughs> and they were there, walk and walk and walk more walk. That's right. But I have to give it up to them, man. They, they have a fantastic work ethic. Whether they're marching or doing the car wash, they have a fantastic work ethic. I want to send out special thanks to everybody in the community that came through. I had the car wash, and I want to go the extra mile for those who came in and just made a donation because your commitment to our young people is what comes. So whether you had your car wash or you come in and make the donation, I just want to thank you for coming out and supporting our young people. I just wanted to throw that out to them, okay? Listen, them young people have so much energy. They want to do something with it. And they need a little guidance. That's all, you know. That's all. Guidance That's and all. support. And we, we can bring them up good, man. That, but we just have to stay in there and be involved. We yeah. have to raise our children. Not TV and computer and cell phone. We have to raise our children, them. <laughs> I got a young, a young boy that I'm trying to motivate a little, you know. Mm -hmm. I give him a, in a dictionary. Then I just get a Spanish-English dictionary, and I want to teach him how to splice rope. Ah. A lot of people don't know how to splice rope. I learned that from an old fellow that used to do sailing. Mm -hmm. So I can teach him how. And then you see, when you show interest in them, they got such a good feeling for you, and they want to do something. But it get to the point where some of them feel like, Man in the house, they don't like me. I go to school. I got, you know, we have to train these little children and take some time out and offer them a little good advice, man. Mm -hmm. Most, most definitely. It's, yeah. it's really, it's, it's really in our court. It's really in yeah. our court. We gotta yeah. do what needs to be done and it, stop making excuses. You know, the fact yeah. of the matter is, uh, a lot of, a lot of, of, of parents don't know how to play video games and I'm saying if you take the time out to learn the video game that your child is playing you gonna go a long ways toward that child having a different perspective of, of you as parent okay because a lot of times they think we're not interested in what they're interested in that's and, the whole thing and you know when they listen to these rap lyrics if we're not listening we're not gonna know the not, whether it is a nastiness or whether it is a goodness 
Okay. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, right? They had a church, a church, a gospel concert at the um, the uh, Trinity Wesleyan Holiness Church here in Christianstead last week, Friday. Okay. And mm -hmm. let me tell you, standing room only. The young people and the parents out in support, standing room only. It was fantastic. Okay. Those children got up there and performed. Now, I'm going to tell you, we even had King Darby mm -hmm. on the stage there with uh, Bill Boynton was there playing with him. And he had six, six talented young people. Two of them were playing and singing and the other four were singing. All right. And they, they, did a, they did a rendition of the, the gospel song, I Know Who I Am, okay? Mm -hmm. All right? And when you see these children, and you know that they didn't have to, to um, drink no courage juice or anything, they got up there, they had it within them <laughs> to get up on the stage and perform. All right? It's wonderful. I'm going to have the, the, the videos going to be, I'm going to get the videos put on YouTube and everything else for the benefit of all of the people who participated so that everybody will be able to see their respective church or youth organization that, that perform. Because, yeah, uh, you know, I, I'm proud of what they'll be doing with these children and everything, but I, I'm looking at the bigger picture. There were a lot of organizations there that brought their young people out and they performed and they otherwise made people, you know, the, the worst thing was they were already standing room only. But when these children get up there and start to sing and the parents, them just start to swell up the place, get even tighter. <laughs> you know, I have to pick you up for all that you've been doing to get across to people. You know, the thing is this, the children, them want to do something and it makes them feel so good if the parents is there. Mm -hmm. So many times, graduation, all kind of thing, and they're looking down to see if they see somebody that they know the parents isn't there. But I believe, Doug, little by little, we're going to get across to the, the parents, you know. Well, I, I, I have to say, but for those situations in my group where something was going on and parents couldn't be there, parents were there, and the kids get up, the first thing they're doing, they're looking, and they're waving, you know, I yeah. want you to, to see me here, yeah. okay? But uh, it, it, was, it was great, it was great, and we got to make sure that we provide the resources and the opportunity, whether it's a church concert, the car wash, the... Uh, going to show off in Carnival in, in, in St. Thomas, marching down the road representing St. Croix, and we have our well-choreographed and positive-looking performances going on out there. And I'm going to reflect back to um, the, the Children's Parade this past Christmas, okay? Uh, uh, this past festival, Carnival on St. Croix. The Children's Parade was a big improvement to me in terms of the choreography, was more about being creative okay not this nastiness that sometimes we see going on out mm -hmm. there where we have children uh acting out what adults have given them example to act out it wasn't like that um 99 percent well, that's the thing you see the city adults doing all this thing and they say ah if she could do it i can do it because she get attention exactly exactly yeah. that's exactly what's happening Okay, and you know, I, I, I said that, right? You know, um, <laughs> first of all, in, in, in the earlier part of my growing up, I ain't finished growing up yet, okay? I'm still working on it. But in the earlier part of my growing up, I know in certain words could have never, never, ever, ever, ever come out of my mouth, okay? Because it's bad enough that Mother Nature would take some of my teeth then, but I know if they had ever come out of my mouth, the teeth them wouldn't have to wait for Mother Nature to walk and <laughs> they would have been one, one slap. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it's, it's really different how things are. But now, it, after, in, in the course of growing up and you're around people who use these type of language regularly and it becomes more acceptable, I try to keep myself in check around the young people to make sure that you know, I, I listen to what they say, and when I hear them say these negatives, I correct them. I, I'm going to tell you, uh, in my neighborhood one time, we had some young people, and it's amazing when you watch the neighborhood and you see the young people grow up, and then all of a sudden the neighborhood seems empty because the young people them gone. 
But I was there, and they, there was this group of young men, and they were talking, and uh, they, they referred to, to females, and they used this word that began with a B, and I went over to them and said, wait, 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 wait. Um, does your mom or your sister walk on four legs and have a tail? And, and I said, uh, you know, and, and I got an immediate response because you could see they stopped and, th and thought about it because they knew the meaning of the word, but they didn't think of it in that literal context. And I said, well, now, suppose you went down the road with your sister and somebody referred to your sister that way and they would tell you, well, you know, you're going to have fight. I said, but then why are you using the language? If you don't like it like that, why are you using it? And just in that little conversation, for that moment, I was able to touch those young people and hopefully get them to a higher level of consciousness so that they could choose the words that they use. You know, I absolutely do not use the N-word uh, because I, I, I love me, first of all. Okay, and I love everybody else too, and I try to stay away from, from derogatory terms like that, and I definitely am not going to give them any, um, any kind of, uh, how should I say, credence in our community. That's just me. Okay, I can't save the world, but that's just me. All right? But Tom, that's, tell you, the message you're really doing important. your part, you hear me, and I wish okay. a lot more people would listen and learn and do their part. I have had the experience where this mother is using terrible, obscene language all the time. And she has small children. And I call out and I says, if you keep that up, I'm going to call the police. And she, the, her answer was, call the police. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sorry for those little children. Well, you know, they, they, and, not, and not just the children, but they will, they will grow up, hopefully... And we have to hope that somewhere along the line they will purge themselves of the same type of behavior. But if not, just trouble coming. <laughs> trouble coming. Now, let, let, me, let, me, let me show you this one with you, right? I have this, this young man. He was doing something he shouldn't be doing. And, I, you know... I tell him, you know, you keep it up. You know, you're going to get dealt with. He, he turned around and let me to know. His mother said, tell him, if anybody knock him, he make sure he knock them back. The problem was that he was going with interfering with people and doing things to people. And when they retaliate for what he did, he then want to invoke the rule selectively. So you see where the violence start. And he can never done. All right? Because that parent is not given any exceptions, any regulation to what they're telling this child. So when you see that we have people saying, oh, you knock me, I'm going to get my gun and I'm going to kill you, I'm going to show you. It's the same thinking my mother tell me, if anybody knock me, I make sure I knock them back. So now I got to anybody knock me, I'm going to shoot them dead. Okay, so we as a community have to take ownership of what it is we do and why. You know, another situation in a school, the children misbehaving, they get put on the, on the detail. Instead of being sent to, to a detention, whatever, they get put on the, the cleanup detail. Mother come in, carry on, my child ain't no trash man, don't have my child. Well, you know, how is your child going to ever learn in a positive way? that there are consequences, and I won't call it negative, because cleaning up your place is a positive thing. But for a child who would rather be playing and having fun, having to go and do the cleanup detail is a form of punishment because they want to be out with the other children playing, right? So how is your child ever going to learn these things? It comes back to us as the community. We have to take responsibility and make sure we do our little part. You may not be able to save the world. Start in your home. Start with your nieces and nephews. You know? <laughs> and and, and I, I say that after coming up in a disciplinarian environment, sometimes when I go in, I, I deal with my nieces and nephews. It's like, <laughs> okay, Uncle Doug in the house. <laughs> make sure we walk a straight line. 
<laughs> but it's all good. It's all good, you know, in, in, in the sense that nobody's being abused, but they, they're learning that, you know, somebody's watching and I should conduct myself accordingly, so forth and so on. But a lot of people now, they don't have the courage to say something or do something. They're kind of afraid. Well, I understand the fear. I understand the fear. You know, when I, uh, years ago, when a child came into Central High, into the office in Central High, and beat the stuff out of someone, an adult school employee, on the premises, in the administration building, okay? I mean, when you have children that could do that, and then the parents come, and they're ready to add in their piece. You, you have to, you know, I, I, I really feel for teachers. I really feel for our teachers and what it is that they have to deal with. All right? Now, mm. and if a teacher make a decision that, you know what, I'm going to teach those who want to learn and those who want to be disruptive, you know, I, I don't have the time and the energy to deal with that. I mean, we will want to be judgmental about that teacher and all this other stuff, but I'm just saying, wait a minute. Why are we sending children to school with this kind of training behind them. Okay? Now, I, I, I see when, you know, the children get out of the car at Central High to go into school. We know that your shirt's supposed to be in your pants and so forth, and so nobody's supposed to be turning you off at the gate because you're not properly dressed. You're not supposed to be dressing in the parking lot. All right? But they're getting out of the car with the parents like that. All right, so we have to understand that we have a responsibility now, for the other 999 children that come dressed properly. This is not to say that all our children are doing this. Okay, let's be clear now. Let's be well, clear. I'll tell you something. <laughs> we this got... has been a good morning, mm -hmm. and you have been hitting the nail right on the head. Well, I'm going to tell you what that and is. I'm going to your finger. I'm going to my finger. What that is, rapper, <laughs> finance. <laughs> Or parental responsibility, community yeah. responsibility, or what going on in the community, I gonna continue because I live here, okay. And as as our cultural dancers, I said we there, mm -hmm. and I want being here to be a quality experience. Yeah, man. Well, you th I thank you for the time that you allow me to say a little something, you know. Well, I go, I, I, yeah. I go, I go share a secret with you, okay. I am, I am being monitored. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to behave myself when you come on the air. Oh, I'm being yeah. monitored and I'm saying that in a positive way because I can't walk no place. And somebody ain't pulling me up on this show and talking about what it is I was talking about and, and what they like about it and so forth and so on. Or what they want me to talk about next time. And But it's all good. I love it. I, see, yeah. I love it. So when I sit down in here, I feel like I'm in a crowd of people having a conversation. I That's know very that nice. That's listening. very nice. <laughs> well, I yeah. thank you for the... Um the program that you have. All right. Okay. Great, great, great. All okay, right. you good. have a great day. All right, yes. good, good. Anyhow, it's getting close to that time. The music has started. I'm feeling it, feeling good, loving it. All right. Okay, so you turn it up and you can hear it too now. All right. It's been great. Reflections, WSTX AM 970. See you Next great, fantastic, outstanding, just plain excellent Thursday. Remember, you may love your Friday, but it starts with Thursday.